This is Frederick from Detroit Berlin, a channel about music related stuff, modular synthesizers, woofer modules and other kinds of modular gear or just regular synthesizers and drum machines. We're going to take a look at the Dufer A152, the voltage addressed track and hold slash analog shift register slash octal switch multiplexer. So what that actually means, all that stuff is the voltage addressed switch is kind of a module that combines multiple yeah, functions in one. It kind of fits nicely together and the module has kind of yeah a bit a bigger footprint. It's not the smallest module out there but I think it can be very useful in bigger modular systems even in smaller modular systems perhaps. I had a patch running on the Moog Matriarch and I'm using the addressed switch in more than one way. I'm using it to track and hold the control voltage input, sending it to the various oscillators in the matriarch. I'm also running an oscillator from the matriarch into the addressed switch. I um, just call it an addressed switch that is a little bit easier. Then I'm sequencing all those different inputs and that means that I get kind of a sequenced oscillator out of the addressed switch. It will be at audio rate so it will be kind of a graphic VCO kind of oscillator sound and way of synthesis. Also got digital outputs which reset and that trigger an uh, envelope generator. The complex envelope generator already did a video on that one. It's I think my favorite, most favorite module of all Duffer modules. And yeah, let's quickly go over the patch. The oscillator going out of the Moog Matriarch is going into the addressed switch and it's going in into the control voltage input which it's like you turn the address knob at audio rate and that means that everything I'm putting into the switch here the IO section you can use it in bi-directional way so you can put eight signals in there get one out or put one signal in there and you get eight outs. When you turn the address knob then all the addresses I would say all the in and outputs or like the outputs. So if you turn the address knob you will actually switch between yeah, all those different outputs or inputs and that means that you can select it via control voltage. So I'm sending the oscillator 
into the CV input so that it selects it at audio rate and then I'm actually just sending uh, control voltages, steady control voltages, but in a sequence. So every step it will be another control voltage. I'm sending those to the uh, switch inputs. So then, yeah, the oscillator will switch those control voltages and put kind of a weird sounding oscillator tone out of it. I will quickly demonstrate how this actually sounds. Draw tone off this address track and hold switch. It's kind of a brittle. Let's see if I can change it on the go. So let's let's see. I'm now turning the knobs off the um, sequencer just to make the control voltages change. Let's first put it like this. And let's maybe give it some sustain. So you can actually, by turning the knobs of the sequencer, change the tone of the oscillator that's going through the addressed switch. Let me continue explaining the patch. So I unplug this cable and I'm not only sequencing the way the addressed switch, the oscillator sounds, I was sequencing it to get some variations going. Also, I'm clocking the stored random voltages from Dofer. I'm sending that to the dual quantizer. I'm sending those into the address track and hold switch in the track input. And then all the outputs are going to the oscillator pitch inputs. So that will change the interval of those oscillators so I can create kind of chords kind of harmonies when playing so to make it a little bit more harmonically interesting then the digital outs they trigger it's kind of a trigger a gate signal and i can use it to trigger a envelope generator or trigger something else maybe a clock or anything that you can trigger or that you can send a gate to. It does take a little bit of space in your system, the A152 from Duffer. But I think that if you create self-generating patches and you want something evolving and something that you have control, that you can sequence, but that will control something else, so to modulate modulations, then I think the address track and hold switch is a good module for you, perhaps. At first glance, I found it pretty difficult to comprehend, but actually, if you divide it in all the different sections, which we will do in an, in, in an instance, uh, when you divide it and you look at every section apart, then it, it's pretty simple. The module is pretty simple. There are multiple ways in how to use this module. Let's first go over the controls. We got a lot of inputs and outputs and we got two knobs. Let's start with the knobs. The address, which is actually the place the LED will light up. And if LED 7 lights up, that means that these are selected and that these will 
pass through the signal that's going in or coming out of this socket. So you can go from 8 to 1 and back. Let's put it in the middle right there. And then we got the CV knob. The CV knob, now it doesn't do anything because it's actually just an attenuator for the incoming CV signal. So if we take a control voltage signal, let's see, can we change the signal by doing this? Okay, so now I can turn this and if I use my sequence, let's see, then I can sequence which in and output is selected. So you can control which output is selected also via this CV input. If you put the first step there, then yeah, if you give a positive control voltage in, then it will only go further. If you put a positive and negative running LFO in there, for instance, then it will go up and down the ladder, I would say. So that's so far pretty, yeah, simple. Below the CV input, we have the clock input and the clock will actually be like the clock for the track and hold. So if you put a signal into there, like a clock signal, then it will track and hold. You can, via a jumper on the back, configure it that the track and hold becomes a sample and hold. Now it's in track and hold mode. I personally prefer sample and hold mode, so I will probably switch it up so that it will be sample and hold instead of track and hold. A track and hold is not the same as a sample and hold. The sample and hold will keep it steady. A track and hold works different. When the incoming signal is high or low, it will hold it. But every other time it will just follow the incoming signal like the LFO or the random voltage coming in. It will only hold it for a brief moment or a longer moment if you're working with gates. Then you got the reset in. If you reach one of those digital outputs, so if you connect one of those digital outputs to the reset in, when it reaches that output, when it selects that output, it will go back to the first one. It will reset the module. So that's pretty interesting. Then we move on to the first row, the row of switches. You got the switch I-O. I slash O, it stands for input slash output. And it means that it's bi-directional, which means you can use it as an input or an output. So you got eight inputs or outputs and you got the common input or output. If you input a signal in the common switch in, then it will come out of those switches, out those eight outputs. If you use these eight as inputs, then they will come out this one common output. It's bi-directional and that means that you can do a lot with it. The track and hold out works differently. The track and hold out, it's the second row. They're all outputs and the lowest one is the common track and hold input. So if you put like a um, random sequence in here, just random CV, then every time it gets a clock, it will sample that. Not like a sample and hold, but it will hold it. As long as it tracks, it will a little bit drop in uh, control voltage. So when you use it as a pitch for a really long note, that's not ideal because it will drop down in pitch a little bit. Just take that in mind. Also, therefore, I personally prefer to use sample and hold, but it can be configured either way. Then you got the digital outputs, 
which are interesting because they can be used as gate signals, as triggers to trigger ADSRs or any kind of yeah module you want to trigger. These signals are just momentary steady voltages. So when it's selected, it gives that voltage. If you select it really quickly, then yeah, the gate will be really short. When you slowly select it, then each step will have like a longer signal. So it will output voltage as long as the LED is lit. I made this other patch that is pretty self-generative. Let's first have a listen. Please let me explain what was just happening. How I configured the addressed track and hold switch. I have the quantized random voltages going into the track and hold. Then I'm outputting four of those, those first four outputs. I'm outputting those track and hold outputs to the four pitch inputs from the matriarch oscillators. What I'm also doing is sending an LFO via the switch input to the four switch outputs. Then these go into the time of the delay and the filter cutoff of the Moog matriarch. What I'm also doing every time it triggers one of those four first sequences, I'm actually triggering the complex envelope generator, which I'm also sometimes switching between attack decay envelope generator or LFO. So when it's triggering the AD envelope generator, every oscillator from the matriarch is going also into the octa linear VCA from Duffer and the complex envelope generator is opening that VCA which is going back into the matriarch in the mixer and then sending it to that filter and that analog delay both which are actually also affected by the addressed track and hold switch so this means that you've got a lot of things going on they all kind of entwine with each other. So that means that, yeah, you get some pretty complex sounds and evolving evolutions out of, yeah, the patch that was running. I was not sequencing anything on the matriarch. I am only clocking those quantized random voltages, clocking the addressed track and hold switch and that's pretty much everything that was going on. A few of those modules and you create this evolving sound. Also use a dual quantizer. That's one thing I want to mention to kind of limit the way the notes are fired to the matriarch because I'm playing a polyphonic patch, which means that every oscillator is tuned differently and what the track and hold does is it transposes each oscillator's pitch to yet another pitch so that you get 
these random combined pitches, which means that you create harmonics. And when I would not be using the dual quantizer, then it would really start sounding like a cacophony real quick. So therefore I'm using the dual quantizer to limit the way those transposing of those pitches can go. So I hope you found this interesting. I hope you kind of get a little bit of comprehension about what the addressed track and hold switch does. It's a track and hold or a sample and hold. It's a switch, an octal switch, which means eight in, one out or vice versa eight outputs and one input. The track and hold is one input, eight outputs. Then you got the gate signal outputs. Not really gates, it's just active when the address is selected. And yeah, you got the controls to select the addresses manually and via control voltage. Also got a reset input to limit the switch from 8 to 7, 6, 5, 4, as low as you want. You can always go over the reset. So if you reset at 5, then if you still turn the knob all the way up, then you will go to 6 and that will still trigger. But having the reset is interesting because if you just are starting to get there, then yeah, you have a little bit of wiggle room for that control voltage input so you don't have to fine-tune everything so in my opinion pretty nice module plenty of options if you need to switch things automatically have real control over what outputs or inputs you want to send to somewhere else then I would say great module and please give it a go, try it out if you can, do some research, there are not many videos on this module, hope this contributes a little bit this video, if you like the video please give it a thumbs up, also would be grateful if you subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this stuff and to really support me you can always join my Patreon page, that would mean a lot to me, so yeah, Link in the description down below. Please follow the channel and yeah, hope to see you next time. Bye bye.